brings us here to touch us now. So in this moment now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, I touch you, I touch you, I touch you, I touch you now, I touch you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will give everyone a gift tonight. A last gift. I will give it to you tonight. I will give it to you tonight. I will give you a gift. Night to do more than just feel good. This is a night to jump in. Jump in over your head. Jump in over your head. Be immersed in my power this night. Modern Pentecostalism began January 1st, 1901 at a small Bible college in Topeka, Kansas, when students, after the laying on of hands, started praying in tongues. Since then, Pentecostalism has become a powerful force in worldwide Christianity. This movement entered the Catholic Church in 1967 and quickly brought thousands of Catholics into the Pentecostal powers of the baptism of the Spirit and praying in tongues. By the late 1970s, Catholic Pentecostalism had spread all over the world. In the early 1990s, God spoke a clear prophetic word concerning the prayer groups at Presentation Parish. Keep the sails of your little boats ready because a fresh, more powerful wind of the Holy Spirit will come. If your sails are ready, you will catch that wind. So we joyfully kept our sails ready. Our groups met faithfully, knowing that some new wind and power of the Holy Spirit was promised. We realized that tremendous powers of the Holy Spirit were being manifested in the ministries of many Pentecostal evangelists. We wanted to experience their ministries. In July 1994, we attended the summer camp meeting of Rodney Howard Brown. During that camp meeting, we knew that this was the promised fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Take the anointing, Rodney would say. God is pouring out the revival anointing for all the churches, so just take the anointing. What's happening in these meetings is more than just laughter. It's more than just joy. It's an outpouring of the glory of God. If you would just get hungry and press in, he would touch you. He will touch you. I don't want to see anybody not touched. Press in. Press in. During those days, we did all we could to receive the anointing. Four months later, the revival anointing that we sought broke out in all the prayer groups of Presentation Parish. The promised new wind of the Spirit was powerful indeed. The people responded. Week after week, the crowds grew.
When God pours out the spirit of revival, he also provides a clear sign. The hallmark of this revival is holy laughter, a gift rooted in Catholic tradition and now experienced by hundreds at Presentation Parish. This gift of holy laughter erupts time and again during the weekly revival meetings. Not any touch of man, it's just a touch of God. He even gets up into the choir loft, he even makes it all the way up there. Tolo, it's over in the school hall, he got over in the school. You're the lucky ones, you got in the church. Tolo, te, to, to, tolo, show, show. Two and a half years now, revival has continued to grow at presentation, culminating in a very special evening, April 12, 1997, when almost a thousand people filled the church to welcome Rodney Howard Brown to presentation BVM Catholic House. Just one thing. N never forget who God used. Never forget whom God used. Never forget whom God used. Okay, and I, I promise you we will never forget whom God used as to bring the anointing. Rodney Howard Brown. <laughs> Rodney and his wife Adonica came to the United States in 1987 from South Africa. They are traveling evangelists, going each week from church to church. Rodney hungered and prayed for a greater outpouring of the Spirit. In April 1989, the revival anointing erupted as a total surprise. While he was preaching, the Holy Spirit descended upon the group gathered in the church. People fell out of their seats. People started laughing uncontrollably. Everyone felt an overwhelming presence of God. At church after church, whenever Rodney ministered, the Spirit manifested himself in the same way. The breakthrough event was Rodney's ministry at the 10,000-seat Carpenter Home Church in Lakeland, Florida in the spring of 1993. Week after week, thousands came to that church to experience revival. Now revival was no longer a far-off promise. Revival had come. Oh. 
Father, this night, we pray that not one person will leave this place the same way they walked in these doors. But let Jesus become so very real to each and every individual in this place. Thank you for your presence that is here right now. Thank you for touching every hungry heart. Spirit of the living God, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. Thank you for what you've done here the past two years. But thank you that this is only the beginning of what you're going to do here. Only the beginning. Only the beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to just say what a privilege and honor it is for us to be here. We've been looking forward to this for a very, very long time. And to hear the wonderful testimonies of what the Lord is doing. I know that God is pouring out His Spirit upon the earth in such an awesome way. And He's not limited it to one group of people or one denomination. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I really, sometimes people don't really know what God's really doing, especially in other places because they never venture over to go find out. But thank God for Monsignor Vincent Walsh who came over. And I, I want to say this. I, I'm so blessed to be here tonight and to see the wonderful musicians and the music and the praise and the worship. It's wonderful. The moment I walked in the door, I sensed the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm at home. As we were worshiping and I was standing over here, I heard the Lord say this to me. That in the next 18 months, during the course of the next 18 months, now listen, that this is the time now for the revival of what God's been doing here the last two years to now begin to shake this area and shake the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Lord says to he says, you haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. But the day will come when this place will be open every day for revival. Every single day. Every single day. Every day. Every day. People, people are going to come from all over America. They're going to hear about what God's doing here through this parish. They're going to hear about what God's doing here and they're going to come in and I see them catching the fire and they're going to take it back to their parish. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord says to you, you must be bold. You know, not to back down one bit, but to just go for everything God's got for you. Because I'm telling you right now, right in this neighborhood, right in this area, there are people that are watching, but they're about to fall in. They're on the Slippery Creek Bank. They're about to fall in. They're about to fall in. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah!
in his sense of sweet presence. Sweet presence tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so kind and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever came for me. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend. There's no other friend so kind as he, as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he gave me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Oh, we do so prevent it. We do worship you, Lord. We do worship you. We do praise you. We do give you glory. We do give you honor. There is none like you in all the heavens and all of the earth. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Redeemer, wonderful Lord, and wonderful Jesus. We're going to pray a mass prayer for everyone here. If you are sick in your body right now, would you take your hand and put it on the sick part of your body right now? If it's your neck, your back, your stomach, wherever you are. Let's pray right now. Now, Father, we take authority of every sickness and disease under the sound of my voice right now. Thank you that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price, not only for our sins, but also for our sicknesses. Let the healing river of God flow throughout this place now into sick bodies here now. I rebuke spirits of infirmity. I rebuke every symptom of sickness and disease. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke every tumor. I rebuke every bit of arthritis, even blindness, deafness, in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, blood diseases, in the name of Jesus. Liver problems, kidney problems. I break your power off of God's people now. Skin diseases, be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I curse every growth and tumor on bodies right now. Come on, to wither up and dry up. Right now, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. That's it right now. The healing power of God is just falling all over this place right now. Right now. You don't have to have hands laid on you. You receive it right in your seat. Right now. Right in your seat. Right in your seat. Be thou made whole. Be thou made whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every pain goes right now. Every sickness, every infirmity goes right 
now. In Jesus' name. Back conditions are being healed. Right now, neck problems are being healed. Right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Something. Oh, wonderful happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. How many have already been touched? Just in your seats tonight. Wonderful Jesus. Now, I'm going to bring a message to the Lord laid on my heart. Then I'm going to pray with all the priests and those that you want me to pray with. And then they're going to, going to turn them loose on you. And they're going to lay hands on every, every, everything that moves. And if it doesn't move, keep your hand on it till it moves. <laughs> I want to read you from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 9. The story of Saul of Tarsus. Verse 1 says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. Say it again. Suddenly. Say it one more time. Suddenly. There shined round about him a light from heaven. Everybody say light from heaven. Light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. See, some people say, well, we don't like this falling down. Well, then you don't like the Bible. Because he fell to the earth. And he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling, he was shaking because of the power of God. I want you to see what happened here. This encounter was an encounter with God. Saul of Tarsus, one of the greatest persecutors of the Christian church, bent on destroying the church, on the way to Damascus, has a head-on collision with God. Now, it'd be one thing having a head-on collision with the truck, but having a head-on collision with God, both are life-changing experiences. One of them is not good. The other one is good. If I went and stood on the interstate, on the highway, what's the main highway that runs through here? 95. The 95. If I went and stood on the 95 and a Mack truck came down the road and hit me at 65 miles an hour, all my friends and family would look at me and say, my Rodney, how you've changed. <laughs> They'd say, you look different. You walk different. You talk different. You're not the same person that we knew. What happened to you? Well, I don't know. I was just standing on the 95, and a Mack truck hit me. And I guess I'm never going to be the same again. How much more when God comes and touches our life that we are going to be changed, and everybody that looks at us is going to see that there's something different about us. You might even end up with a name change. Saul's name changed from Saul to Paul. God hit him so hard, he knocked the S off and stuck a P there. When the Lord first touched me, I was concerned that he was going to change my name from Rodney to Odney.
But the touch of God is not something that you, you wonder, did it happen? I'm not sure. I really would like to be touched. I think I was touched. You know you were touched. You know you were touched. Saul had an encounter with God. Saul was touched by God. And his whole life changed. He wrote nearly two-thirds of the New Testament. And what a transformation in the man's life. From being a persecutor to becoming a preacher, a proclaimer. That would boldly go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a transformation. When God comes and touches you, you will never ever be the same again. What Philadelphia needs is the touch of God. What Philadelphia needs I believe with all my heart that God can give us a revival that will shake the city of Philadelphia to the very foundation. All it will take is hungry people. That's all it's going to... Now you might say, well, Saul wasn't hungry. Do you know something? Sometimes the people that oppose God the most are the most hungry. They are crying out. They're looking for something that's real. Because you could see his outward display was one to destroy the church. But I'm telling you, I believe in all my heart that inwardly he was crying out for something that was real. And he was on his way to Damascus and suddenly, I like that word, suddenly. Suddenly, suddenly, Jesus came to him and he fell, he fell out. He fell out of the power of God. There are people today that would say that God doesn't touch people that way in this day and time that we're living in. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. It's up to us to hunger. It's up to us to thirst. And we will be filled. He said, if you draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. He is waiting for us to come. He is waiting for us to surrender every area of our life to him. It's not something that you can just click your finger like it's we're pulling up at a McDonald's or a drive through Well, I'm going to run to church and get a touch from God, then I'm going to go back and do whatever I was doing before. It's coming to Him. It's surrendering every area of your life and saying, Lord Jesus, come and do what you want to do. Change me. Touch me. Fill me. I don't care if my friend and family don't even recognize me when you finish with me. But oh, come and change me, Lord. Change me. Change me. And he will. He will. He will. Remember this. When the angels came at the announcement of Jesus' birth, they said joy to the world. They didn't say depression to the world. The Lord has come. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they looked at Peter and John. They perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, but they marveled and took knowledge of the fact that they'd been with Jesus. Why? Because they were depressed. Somebody said, look at that sorry looking thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I know why he's like that. He's been with Jesus. <laughs> Not on your life. People are going to look at you. They're going to see there's something different about you. Your eyes look different. You speak different. Your face is lit up. It, it's radiant. It's shining.
with the glory of God. You look different. You, you're a happy person to be around because you've received the good news. I mean, before you get the good news, you're sad. But once you get the good news, you're glad. Why is it that we sing songs in the church, glad day when I was born again? Joy, 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 if you come to Jesus, joy, joy, joy. But yet you look at people, their faces are so long, they look like they got baptized with lemon juice. And then we are trying to reach a lost and a dying world, and the world look, take one look at the church and they say, I'm, I'm, I want what you've got. I can just imagine if we sent some of them to go help somebody who's about to commit suicide, he would just say, that's it, I'm going to jump. I know there's no hope for me now. I thought there was hope for me, but I've taken one look at this Christian and I know there's no hope for me now. When Jesus comes, he makes the difference. When Jesus comes, everything changes. When Jesus touches you, everything changes. You're going to know about it. And what, once he touches you, everybody else is going to know about it. Because you're going to have to go tell. You become a blabbermouth. You can't be quiet. You've got to go tell everybody what Jesus has done for you. You're going to shout it from the mountaintops. You're going to imagine, imagine somebody like when the man that was born blind and was, his eyes were opened. When Jesus told a lot of people, sometimes they don't tell anybody, only because he would be swamped. He would be swamped. But how can you tell a man that's been born blind who can now see, don't tell anybody? <laughs> and when they questioned the man, he said, look, I don't know, because they were bringing up a lot of things. He said, look, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. But I do know this one thing. Once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was blind, but now I can see. And there'll be a lot of people that will come against the move of God, and they'll say, well, that can't be God, this can't be God. All you have to tell them, look, I don't know too much about what you're saying. All I know is once I was bound, but now I'm free. Once I was bound, but now I'm free. Jesus has come, and he's touched me, and I'm never, ever going to be the same again. Now, I believe that God wants to touch people here tonight in a very, very special way. This is not about me, and I've always said that. Do you know that this month, even as we speak this week probably, is exact eight years ago that this revival broke out in upstate New York? Eight years ago? Eight years ago. It's not, it's not about me. It's, it's about Jesus. It's about the touch of God. The Lord just used me as a fire lighter. I'm, I'm a lighter. I go around and light fires. And that's all I do. I go around and light fires. And what he wants to do with you, because you see, you're going to reach people that I would never reach. I'll be honest with you. I never dreamed that the day would come that I'll be standing here. <laughs> Hallelujah! But I know that there are many other places that probably I would not even be able to get in the front door. But you're going to get touched. And God's going to take you.
you there. And so it doesn't really matter whether they accept me or not, but they're going to accept Jesus and they're going to be touched by his power. And it's all by his Holy Spirit. And that's what he wants to do. <laughs> be blessed! Say this on me, suddenly. Say, when Jesus touches me, I'm never going to be the same again. Say, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I want all that he has for me. I'm pressing in tonight. Say this on to me. Say, when the priests lay hand on me, I receive a fresh touch. A fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. One of the most important things that we need to do must take place right now, and that's to give everyone an opportunity. Maybe you've come.